Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be giving you a little bit more of a overview about what uh, Sublime Text 2 really looks like. So I just opened up a project here. Uh, this is one I already have open. Basically, this little sidebar window will pop up if you throw a folder onto your Sublime Text window. So um, the, to illustrate this, I'm just going to go to here to my desktop and uh, I have this CSS folder right here. And I'm gonna just throw this onto, onto my uh, Sublime Text 2, or you could even toss it onto the icon. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a new window. And in this window, you'll have this folders here on your left. Uh, these folders you can open up, and if you'll notice, you can click on these documents to edit them, right? And they're not gonna pop up up here. Uh, in the in the previous window, you'll notice I had this uh, CSS file and this index.html up here. If you want the file to actually stay open, you just double click it and it'll pop up as a tab. So that way if you have multiple files open, uh, if, let's say I open up index here. If I want to go back and forth between these two files, I can, if, well if you're on a Mac, you can do command 1 to go to the first tab, command 2 to go to the second tab, just like you're used to in Chrome. Also you'll notice that over here, is a mini map of your code. So you could grab this slider hand and have it scroll down, or you can physically grab the highlighted part of this scroll window here, and you might be able to get a little bit more visual representation of your code. I know some people just turn this off right away, but I'm working on a large enough monitor that, uh, you know, I, I actually don't mind it. I don't mind there being sort of a, a visual overview of my project or whatever code I'm looking at. Uh, just to the right here. So I usually leave that on. However, I know lots of people turn it off. To turn it off, you would just go to View and you would click Hide Minimap and it's gone. Uh, you can also hide the tabs if you'd like. Um, you can hide even the, um, the sidebar. We can hide the sidebar right here. It's gone. And now this is real bare bones. Uh, if we wanted to let's say jump to our CSS file. You're wondering how do we get to our CSS file? It's still open. Um, you can do still do tab or control one to get to the first tab, but if you don't have the tabs open, you're not gonna remember that. Another thing you can do is you can click uh, command T and this is going to be all of the files that are in the project that you have open. So if you do command T, and we just start typing styles. Okay, you could see that it's the only one. We'll hit enter and it takes us into styles. Since we're already here, it didn't do anything. But let's do the same thing again for index. So we'll do command T index. We're already there. So you, as long as you know your file names, you can really quickly jump between them. You don't even have to use your mouse. You can stay on your keyboard if you'd like. So this is a way you can just sort of get around uh, Sublime Text 2. For right now, I'm going to turn the sidebar back on. I'm going to turn the tabs back on because I have enough screen real estate. I've even blown up the text size a ton. Uh, your text size will obviously be smaller than this. Uh, but really, uh, keep in mind here, we can do anything you want just like you normally expect. Move these tabs around, whatever. There's even a full screen mode too if you're working in uh, one of the later uh, Apple operating systems. I'm on Lion here, but I'm on Mountain Lion on my laptop, and it's you know really the same thing. So nothing crazy there, nothing out of the ordinary. So let's see what else we have here for options. Uh, there is preferences, but preferences might be a little confusing if you jumped in. I know if you're used to something like TextMate or Coda, there's going to be a nice visual uh, menu for preferences. That's why I'm going to take a whole video in the next video to show you exactly how to change the preferences. Um, and how to do it, you know, a way that it works and how to do it the right way. Under file, you'll have exactly what you'd expect, open, open, recent, save, uh, all that stuff. Uh, under edit, we you can, you know, undo, redo, copy, paste, all the stuff you'd expect. Uh, we also can choose the in line indenting. Um, so you can see keyboard commands here. Let's say we want to indent this line. Uh, I just did command bracket. Uh, like it said here to do. So you can look through here to see any of these different key commands, uh, insert line after, insert line before, delete line. Um, so you can change how the uh, the text is wrapping. Um, 
So you can wrap the paragraph at you know a certain amount of characters or something. Uh, so in here, it's exactly sort of what you'd expect. Nothing too crazy. Uh, selection, split into lines. Um, and like I said, you can just go through these menus, but there really isn't a ton here. I know if you're used to uh, something like Dreamweaver, there's just a whole ton of buttons and options and uh, I, I don't know, like a thousand buttons like a click to add an anchor link and stuff like that. You really don't need that because uh, it's it's a heck of a lot faster to just type, you know, the anchor link itself yourself. So under find, it's, you know, just like any other application, command F, find something. You'll see this little menu pops up down here. Uh, if we do command shift find, you can find, find and replace. Um, you can even have this where, where it can check in multiple files or folders. You can do things like have your find be case sensitive. Uh, you could look for whole words, regular expressions if you'd like. So they really have a lot of features here. Uh, and then if you want to get rid of this command find, you could just hit escape and it's going to remove that menu from down here. Just command F. Um, and then uh, it was command option F to find and replace and then command shift F for find and replace over multiple files. Okay, so uh, let's also go to view. So view is where we turned off our sidebar, mini map, all that stuff. Um, there's also things in here like layouts. You can set multiple columns here. Now if I have two columns, I can drag this tab all the way over here and have both of these files open at once. And this is really great if you're going to be going back and forth between two and you'd like to have them both open, maybe to check class names or something like that as you're typing them. Really, it's, you know, could be helpful in, in certain situations. I typically just leave them here or not even have them in tabs at all and do what we did before to switch back and forth. Okay, so now I'm gonna click view. You can notice you can also in view under layout, you can have rows and you can have multiple columns. I think you can have up to four columns, four rows. You can have a grid of four where four documents are open here. Uh, and this could be useful in all uh, different various situations. I personally mostly have it in single, uh, you know, 99% of the time, but having the option to do that is is very good. I like it a lot. So I also noticed you'll be able to uh, edit what syntax you're using here, uh, which is the same thing we would get if we were to click the HTML in the bottom right corner. We can set up what our indentation is at. An indentation uh, is using four spaces, and that's pretty standard, so uh, that should be maybe what yours comes with out of box, but um, I, I don't typically change the tab because most people have it set up that way as far as I know. Um, this word wrap, if we were to uncheck this word wrap, you'll notice our paragraph tags go this way and they'll extend into oblivion. Uh, you know, that's really nice to see your code at a glance if you'll notice it made this document a whole ton shorter. But uh, I usually use word wrap because uh, I like to see all of the content. I don't want it to scroll right. I don't have, you know, unlimited horizontal space. Okay. And uh, of course there's spell check in here, or dictionary if you need to use that. You can go to anything. Tools, uh, if you're using a language that needs to uh, be built, um, you can, it, I usually have it on automatic. I haven't had a situation, let's say I'm, uh, I'm running some Python or I'm running some Ruby or something. I haven't had uh, a situation where I've needed to build it using the automatic and it didn't correctly find the right language. But then again, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm usually uh, running, you know, Python or Ruby. So uh, th this, if you need to build, the command is just command B and it'll run your code. Um, you can also create plugins and snippets. Of course, we're gonna go over some of this stuff later. Projects, uh, we have a project open right here. Um, it's just this tab right here. If you want to save a project, and open it up again later, you can save your project here. So if this is a set of files you're gonna be using a lot of times, you might as well just save a project if you're gonna be closing the window. That way you can just open the project and have all that stuff come back to where it was. Okay, like I said, there's not a whole lot to Sublime Text, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So, you know, keep watching and become a Sublime Text 2 master. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, you know, hit me up on Twitter, Level Up Tuts. Uh, Facebook now, we have a level up tuts, or you can reach me at uh, Twitter at S. Talinsky personally. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.